And it's a 30-6 to six final. Uh, should have been 30-7, to seven, but the SEC officials ran off the field before State's offense even got out of the end zone. No extra point allowed. Really only relevant if you happen to be living in Las Vegas this time. All we know is Mississippi State loses again to Alabama, and Mike Leach, uh, his post game was very blunt about it. It was, and we also got a lesson in dinosaurs and uh, and oil companies, and uh, we will have that video posted for you later. And it's uh, by the time you're watching this, you may have already seen it. It it will be one of those viral moments. But David, let's be honest. Okay, not many people expected Mississippi State to come here and win this ball game today. They didn't. Defensively, State played really good at times in this ball game. There were a couple drives here they didn't, but by and large, you know, State outgained Alabama tonight. And we, and we talk so much about, you know, there's all these message board experts, you know, about statistics. The only statistic that matters is scoring. And Alabama won 30-6 to six tonight. And it took state scoring on the final play of the game. And there was a flag down. How they explain that, I have no clue. And then somebody tried to say it was an offensive penalty and the touchdown didn't count. It counted. And it's state's first offensive touchdown in forever and a day. I think the flag, uh, maybe the officials had to get off the field because they had to go ice their arms because they were so busy throwing flags all evening. Yes, Alabama had a share of penalties, but Mississippi State, I mean, if they came home without yellow laundry in their uniforms, I'm going to be surprised. No, that that's not why Mississippi State lost the game. It just made it uglier than it needed to be, made it longer than it needed to be. Let's get back to the first quarter. State is moving the ball, second time with the ball. The offense is running crisply. They're making plays, converting downs, moving the chains, and then a dropped ball on fourth and three. And I want to make clear, I was fully supportive going for it because have you seen Mississippi State's place kicking this year? You can't even count on an extra point at this point. You have to go for it. Mike Leach played aggressive. The offense bought into it. Will Rogers makes the right read. Maybe he could have thrown to a different receiver. But Jaden Wally is there, ball in his hands. Yes, the defender hits him. An SEC quality receiver holds onto that ball and the drive continues. That in so many ways summarized the night. Yeah, and Jaden will tell you he should have had that. He let the ball get on him a little bit. And, of course, the defender makes a play, too, which was um, kind of a comedic situation, David, that you and I undertook. This was a legitimate PBU. Alabama credited with 15 PBUs tonight, and some of those are by the official stat crew. I want you to look at the stat sheet and make sure you didn't get credited with one. <laughs> you know, I joked one time those guys were they, – it, it was such a joke uh, – then I joke one of those guys, I said, uh, you know, after Jalen Green was accused of targeting and finally exonerated, I said, well, maybe you can give the Alabama running back a PBU there since he prevented the interception. It was, it was so ridiculous. But at the end of the day, David, I mean, this is the little sides that we chase in a ball game like this where, unfortunately, Mississippi State didn't have a chance to win. And I think that's the rub for Bulldog fans. It's like, yeah, we, our goal was to come over here, survive this, and not leave here injured. And I don't think we did. But I think it's time for us to expect a little more against Alabama. And I understand that they're the best team in this conference and has been for a while, but we need to start gaining ground. I think the Bulldogs came into this game injured, and I mean injured in their psyche. And Mike Leach hammered that point home immediately, saying that if you want to scare guys on this team, put on an Alabama jersey. I, I was noted during the game, State scored one touchdown now in five games against Alabama, the last in 2019, and they only scored today because the clock has expired and the official darn near doesn't get the ball down in time for a play to get off there. So another thing to possibly yell about. The fact is, Mississippi State – particularly on the offensive side of the ball, just does not show up to play Alabama teams. This is not a great Alabama defense. They're good, they're athletic, but they're not great. State's offense, yes, rattled last week Kentucky. They had a week to fix that. They just don't show up tonight. They don't. And it's one of those things, too, David. You know, State put up a bunch of points against LSU in 2020. State's put up a bunch of points against Arkansas and A&M this year. You know, State's put up some good points against Ole Miss. Not enough to win, unfortunately, under the administration. But this team, this Alabama team, and the mystique and the tradition, and we're not taking anything away from Alabama. Right. The talent differential is expansive. Maybe not as much as it was even with Sylvester Croom's team. Sylvester Croom's team were outmanned and beat Alabama twice. But I think it's because Croom was able to convince those guys that's just another team. Mississippi State under Mike Leach, this group has not understood that and not been able to come to grips with the fact that, yes, we can play with Alabama. They've been able to play with everybody else in this conference, including going to Athens, Georgia, and nearly winning a ball game there. But something about this team gets in the heads of the Bulldogs. And other people go score. I mean, you see Tennessee put up a bunch of points, or Arkansas scores, Ole Miss has scored, obviously, against, against Alabama. 
But for some reason, there is this mental block. And uh, I don't know if you need to, to put the scout team in Alabama jerseys all week long or, you know, put up something all around the locker room. But State's got to find a way to get through this mental block with the, this Crimson Tide team. Of course, they were missing Dylan Johnson. And I think in the first couple of series, there were plays that Dylan Johnson probably converts. Jaquavius Marks, he did score the one touchdown, but I don't think he saw the field and the blocking, what blocking there was very well. LaQuinston Sharp, his presence was missed. Uh, Alabama didn't just destroy the offensive line, but they pretty much had their way when they needed to make a play to get back there and put pressure on. They shut down the running games. So you have two of your vital leaders missing on offense. By the same token, plays were still there to be made. It would not have changed the game, but Tulu Griffin, you can't ask for a better pass for a touchdown. And Will is getting hit as he throws it and puts the ball where it needs to be. Tulu has lost his defender, and he drops the ball. Yeah, and that's, you know, unfortunately in big games like this, that's kind of been the story for Mississippi State. We, and, and they harp on this lack of execution. And it almost sounds like a cliche and we get tired of hearing about it. But that's the reality of the situation. When there are plays to be made in big moments, this team has struggled to execute at times. Of course, when there were opportunities to put A&M and Arkansas away, they did. So they have it in them. But for some reason, they have lacked that intensity on the road. And Mississippi State's got some big road games left, and Gordon, you know, including one uh, on Thanksgiving night that's going to be awfully important for this team. You know, last week the defense was manhandled. No other way to put it. By Kentucky and a mediocre offensive line, Alabama's a better offensive line. Zach Arnett's group, let's give them credit. They came to play, even though they were getting no support at all, and they are so much a different defense when they have support. They played as if it was a 0-0 game much of the evening. Uh, credit to that bunch. They didn't have the speed to chase some guys down. They certainly weren't going to get past that offensive line which was given pretty much the liberty to, uh, you know, you'll, you'll read the venting of Mike Leach about Mississippi State's hands in all sorts of areas. Well, Alabama was winning the hand-to-hand -hand fighting their own way. State got no pressure on Bryce Young to speak up. All that said, I thought the defense acquitted itself very well tonight. Well, and I thought State did get some pressure on him, but give Bryce Young some credit, too. There were times he was able to kind of escape pressure and buy some time and made some throws down the field. That uh, That's a reason the guy won a Heisman Trophy. Right. I and mean, this is not some scrub I hear. I don't think he had an especially great game, and yeah. I think he'll admit that himself. But there were some times early in the game when Alabama needed to get momentum, he was able to make some plays down the field. And the first touchdown he throws, I mean, he had all day to throw. And at some point, the coverage is going to break down. That's just the reality of life. But um, – you know, we've had worse nights in Tuscaloosa, but uh, I'm tired of having these nights where we just want to endure them rather than enjoy them. I look forward to maybe in two years when we come back over here, we're looking to win a football game. Let's also give credit to uh, Jameer Gibbs. How Georgia Tech did not take full advantage of that guy is a baffling. And I love you, Jeff Collins, but goodness, that guy is so good, and he didn't take over the game. Bryce Young didn't really take over the game. So, again, I thought the dog defense – it quitted itself reasonably well, but they needed points. Nothing mattered without points. Yeah. Will Rogers didn't have a great game. It was probably his worst passing averages, certainly since his freshman year. And a lot of that was the drops, too. But at the same time, he was also not delivering the ball well in certain situations. And I think each side, receiver and passer, kind of lost confidence as the game went on. Or am I just making that up? Well, and I think you got to give this Alabama secondary credit a lot too I mean they, they while we joke about the 15 PBUs which is a joke but they were a lot of balls that they got their hands on there were a lot of balls too there were a couple passes too David that I thought should have been PI that we don't get a call there and, and you, you know how it is over here you're not you're not going to get a call and there were some calls tonight that I think were absolutely horrendous in favor of Alabama but let that not underscore Maybe perhaps the ability of this Crimson Tide secondary that is very, very athletic. Kool-Aid McIndustry is one of the best cornerbacks in this country. State challenged him tonight, and he answered the and situation. Tulu beat him on the play that he should have caught. Absolutely. And I think that's maybe that's one of the things, too, you can look at. And, I, and I'm not a moral victories guy. But maybe if you're Steve Spurrier Jr. and Drew Howling said, you can say, hey, listen, this is the number one corner in the country, and this is you getting open. And so maybe perhaps this will be a springboard for us. But the bottom line is, David, State loses the ball game. We've got a week to let it marinate because we have a bye week, and then we've got a big game coming up with Auburn. One last thing to talk about this game tonight, then we'll move on to the bye week. Going forward on fourth down, yes, I made the crack about the place kicking. Well, it's no longer a crack. It's true. This team needs to go for it on fourth down, even in some unreasonable situations, because they just can't count on a field goal at all at this point. At the same time, Mike Leach. can count on a punter a lot of times either. We've, we've had back with, with this. We've had two terrible shanks in the last two weeks when – 
we're trying to flip the field. When it matters most, after some good punts, then they come in and make that one shank that really changes the field. I'm glad you brought that up. By the same token, Mike Leach going for it on fourth down. I think this team has to do it, and the coaches are making a statement. We trust you. We want you to try it. Get out there and take your shot. We're giving the ball into your hands. But the players didn't follow through and make those fourth downs. So it wasn't coaching scared that lost this game. You can argue some of the play calls. You can argue some situations. That's true every game. But they came in coaching to win. The team did not make the plays to win. I think that's true, too. I think Mike Leach showed from the very first possession, we're not here to keep it close. We're not going to kick a field. We're not going to beat Alabama by kicking field goals. We're here to put touchdowns on the field. And I think, again, it shows some trust. And I think Judd Johnson said it best, too, that the defense feels they're, they're happy when we go for it because they want to keep a drive going. They don't feel shortchanged if they get to short into the field. They think it's their job to get a stop. And so this is how things are going to be. And so and, and State needs to kind of play a little bit reckless, to be quite honest with you. We have some deficiencies we've got to overcome. Absolutely. And now they have an open week to hopefully overcome some of that. And, of course, you know, we didn't get maudlin about it, let it override the situation, the tragic pass in Sam Westmoreland. That weighed on players' mind. I know the offensive line had to get together last night to uh, kind of let some of the emotions out. But now they have an open week to take care of it. I'm going to be very fascinated to see how Coach Leach and staff handle the practice week, how much work they do, how much work they don't, what days they give them free. How do you do this after eight grinding games and now two emotional defeats in that regard? I'll say this though, we as fans do never, we never think of it like, you know, a loss is an isolated event. They treat it much more like professional football in that you lose a game, the game's over, you win a game, the game's over, go on the next one. Maybe that's the hope that they can transfer that attitude and pretend, you can't pretend they didn't happen, but say it's in the books, you're five and three, and you still have four games left to determine what bowl you go to and how this season is remembered. Absolutely, and that's the thing, too. That this season is going to be defined by what you do in November. It's simple as that. They always remember what you do in November. That's the difference between a Tennessee ball and a Florida ball game, and, and sometimes even more than that. But, uh, you know, states probably put themselves behind the eight ball for a lot of that. But the reality of it is is you got a, a November coming up where, you know, state has a chance to, to really put a, a nice exclamation point on this season or a question mark. And so – Next week, we'll start figuring out how they're handling it. Of course, Bulldog basketball getting cranked up soon. Um, Mike Nemeth is reporting also on uh, fall ball with baseball going. A lot of happening there, but still overridden now by a 30-6 defeat here in Tuscaloosa to Alabama. For our Jeans Page crew, for Steve Robertson, Mike Nemeth, and Robbie Falk here covering the game, and Paul Jones back in Starkville rounding up things on the message board, I'm David Murray. And enjoy the evening and the rest of the weekend and the open date because we all need the break.